Today we're going to go a little bit deeper with our round numbers and 50s and talk about average daily range and medium price levels. Stay tuned traders, you're going to definitely want to watch this. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're going to be just going a little bit deeper in with our round numbers and 50s levels in looking at some of the uh, price action that occurs throughout the day. We're going to talk about the average ranges, how that can help us make some trading decisions. And we're going to talk about the medium price levels and using the Asia box when we go into the London session to, he to help identify the best opportunities when they present. As you can see, each video, I've had a tremendous amount of feedback and emails and everything else, but you can see as simple as our approach has been, we talked about using the high and the low of the day, the equity opens and round numbers, the 12 candle rule. We're going to be getting a little bit deeper and peeling the onion back on each one of those uh, simple concepts because even though it sounds simple and it looks simple, as you're finding out in live time, merging that with making decisions in live trading time is where things get challenging. But when we can just keep peeling things back so that we've got a complete understanding or, or even a, a better understanding of what's happening when we go to the screen using our simple concepts, how some of these ideas will, will help us make a better decision in terms of whether we want to be buying low because it's a buy day or selling high because it's a sell day. Oftentimes traders will look at some of this stuff and it breaks low so they buy it. Meanwhile, it goes up but only goes up a certain distance because it's actually a sell high day to watch the market move down against them, either stopping them out of break even with a small loss or a big loss. So it's really important to be able to, again, I talk about preparation. It's the most important thing you can do is go to the screen with a plan each and every day being organized so that you've got some perspective and, and calmness when you go to the screen, not going there and just turning the screen on and looking for a trade that and, and you know win some, lose some, but going in a circle with frustration, uh, anger, no, nothing that you can build upon. We talked about these simple things because it's duplicatable and it's scalable, but it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to be able to merge the knowledge with live performance time. So let's talk about this. Average daily range. <clears throat> Each of the currency pairs has an average daily range. It doesn't matter what instruments you trade. I talk about mainly trading the, the pound crosses. That is pretty much all that I look at. Now, I've just written down here the average daily range for the major pairs that I follow. And that's just roughly over a 10 day average. You can use whatever number you want. I use 10. I think 10 days is enough. But it's important to understand how this can uh, help us during trading time to know that we, if we're in a, a trade that it may have a certain distance to go in terms of reaching a profit target potential. If it's a trend day, it may, it may be important to us if we come to the screen in the U.S. session at the end of the London session and it's already moved a full a ATR, perhaps giving us an idea of where we might want to enter the market if there's a, if there's a move back in the opposite direction. And it will also give us some perspective looking at median price and the Asian range, how that plays in with our price levels. So for simplicity's sake, I've just kept the numbers 75, 0, 25, 50, and 75. I'm going to use a really basic analogy to give you an idea of what I try to do each day when I go to the screen. There's basically two types of scenarios. No matter what the market does before we come to the screen in the London Open, they can move at 50 pips, they can move at 75 pips, or they can just go sideways. Now we're going to talk about how the market closes in the U.S. session and going into the Asian session, how that, how that can have some impact on our decision making. We're not going to do that in this video. We'll be doing that in the next couple videos as I'm going to have some follow-up to this video. But for simplicity's sake, let's assume that the market in Asia is in a consolidation in a 25 pip range. Now we'll talk about the other scenario in a second but I want you to grasp the concept of just some simple things when you come to the screen what we want to look for. In this particular case the high is roughly in this area and I talk about price being contained within a 25 pip box. 
when Europe, when Asia closes and Europe opens, we may see the market pump down into the lower box. Usually what we'll look for is three bursts in one direction. They may come back up and hit the stops again one more time, up top. What that does is it triggers traders stop losses that are short, possibly somewhere up here. It may also trigger breakout orders for traders who want to go long. It may trigger uh, profit taking orders for traders that might have been long off the bottom that haven't been stopped out here. And then we may see the market move down in three more pushes and continue down into that lower box. In this particular scenario, this is 25 pips below the Asian range. The average stop hunt is 25 pips. Now in some cases, if the market was to, uh, in Europe, come down and hit the low of this box and come back up, that in itself is still a 25 pip stop hunt. But what we want to see is it break out of the box. It may not go all the way down, it may just go halfway down, it doesn't matter. We want to see that break into the lower box. And again, I'm just using a simple analogy today with these numbers. Obviously the market's going to, we're going to work in all different areas, different numbers, but we'll use the double zeros and 75 as an example. The market could be down in this area when London opens. So this could be the uh, 2.45 candle, the 3 o'clock candle. Again, we talk about 3 a.m. New York as the London Open and 9.30 a.m. New York as the New York Open. When I come to the screen, it doesn't matter whether it's London or New York, I will try and redraw my highs and lows no matter where they are. What we'll look for is something like this, where the market pulls back inside and at that point it may retest the bottom of that box move up top. So we've just hit stops of traders that were short and we've just stopped out traders that might have sold into the Europe open, the Asia close, thinking that this market was going down. We may, the market may have even come down from the previous session into a consolidation. Now at this stage we have had a 50 pip, roughly 50 pips of movement in this market. Now if we were looking at say the pound USD and the average daily range is 100 pips, we know we've already used 50 pips of that up, possibly. One of the things you have to understand about this is that, for the most part, these ranges are flexible. But there are some rules that the smart money have to follow in terms of sticking to a certain amount of movement. Otherwise, they could move the currency, uh, any currency, as far as they would wanted to, and that would obviously have catastrophic effects on the global economy. So there are inherent rules within the industry, um, within, within the markets of how much movement is allowed per day, per week, per month, and probably quarterly and yearly as well. So if our average daily range is 100 pips for the pound, and we see this market move up 25 more pips, but Again, when we see the market move 25 above or below that Asian range, I want to look to see if there's any sort of setup in terms of a sell, a sell high or a buy low setup. And we are going to go through the types of uh, price action that would demonstrate that to us. But in this case, the market came up to that upper 75 level, maybe gave three pushes, and then came back underneath. And this may have been towards the uh, third or fourth hour of the London opening session. So we'll, we'll say that this is uh, 2 a.m. New York. This is 3 a.m. New York. This could be around 6 a.m. New York, roughly. Okay? So these are the two main scenarios that you're going to encounter. And in the next few videos, we're going to get a bit more detailed with the stop hunts. Uh, and also using the, the previous day's highs and lows to give us an idea potentially where uh, these levels may occur at. But what I want you to grasp right now, because they'll move the market all the way, all around in Asia sometimes, and again, that, that has a few effects. One, obviously, uh, I think primarily we see a lot of violent movement in Asia sometimes because it's cheaper for them to move the market when it's less liquid. 
but also that triggers a lot of technical indicators. So it's important that each time the market moves outside of a range that you redraw your highs and lows and either use your scenario with your inside the numbers. And again, it's really important to know that if you're trading somewhere in here, especially if it's staying inside of the numbers, that they're potentially setting up longs and shorts for stop hunts on both sides, which means that if you're buying somewhere on the way up, and your stops down here, the further you get away from the bottom, the bigger your risk is. Same thing coming off the top. The further you away from the top that you sell, the bigger your risk is. And then at the end, they hit both sides and stop out both sides of those orders. If you're trading in median price, a lot of the trades that might, you might think are swing trades, they jam you into the middle around the median price. And then when the stop hunt occurs, when they expand the range out, Traders, again, who are caught inside that, that middle area on the wrong side will, will get stopped out, and then they'll do the same thing onto the other side. But what the, the biggest thing I want you to grasp out of this is to draw your highs and lows and calculate 25 pip increments, expecting to see a stop hunt in one direction. Now, the other scenario that we haven't talked about is that if it's a trend situation, we sort of use that analogy up here. Traders will get come down from a strong movement down. The market uh, goes into a sideways movement in Asia. It drops down. Traders follow that move at the end of Asia or with Asia. It, it jams them in down low, stop hunts them up high, somewhere in that 25 pip range, possibly either into the numbers or above. And then it will roll them over for a measured move, at least of 50 to 75 pips or more. So it's important, again, coming to the screen prepared, knowing that you're looking for sell high setups on sell days or buy low setups on, on buy days. Now these, again, are there are other days when the market will trend. Those, we're going to talk about those in one of the coming videos. So biggest concept, use your average daily range to help you make some of the decisions as the market, if it's starting to bend outside of its normal average movement and then also when you're in Asia if you're overpriced calculate that as your medium price you do not want to get caught trading in this area you want to stay high or low in terms of entering the market and that's where you want to be looking is this a sell high day or a buy low day because you could you can buy down low and then all of a sudden you you seem to be struggling and the market's doing this and then rolls over Okay, in some other scenarios it may, it may work its way back up to the top to hit the top of the day before it rolls over, but you want to make sure that if you're uh, buying low it, and you do get caught into this situation, that you're aware that you could possibly be into a move that's going to roll over against you. And again, in this scenario, you're in between the numbers and this is where we, the 12 candle rule is so important because in this scenario, Usually Europe will be the first stop hunt, and that's what's important. If London opens outside of the range, that's a really strong indication that we're potentially going to be moving in the other direction. Now that's separate from an aggressive 50 pip move. Now the 50 pip stop hunt usually will, will occur when a market is somewhere inside of the high and the low of the week. Okay. So if we're 50 pips off the low of the week and the market's inside of that range, again, you're caught inside of a high and a low. Don't be surprised if you see the market stop punt down low before resuming its move back up. That is a great opportunity if you're aware of it and you see it coming. Um, but for the most part, I want you to just start making sure you're not trading inside of this area. You want to wait for the market to break out um, on either side and making sure that ideally you're buying low or selling high. And then your average range, once if the market's already moved a certain distance, and if it's moving again, you think it's going to keep going forever, start keeping an eye on these numbers. You can calculate these pretty simple with your, uh, with your platform. So hopefully you got some value from today's video, traders. The next video, we're going to go in and talk about stop hunts a bit more specifically and the different types that you'll see. Uh, and then again, even from there, when to be looking at taking profit at, at certain points and how to calculate some of the measurements for that. Biggest thing, make sure that you're thinking in terms of 25 pips above or below, medium price, or outside of this range. Doesn't mean it has to go to the numbers. And again, we focus on our double zeros and fifties. 
Sometimes you might be in a 100 pip box, other times you might be in a 50 pip box in terms of where this price action going out of Asia is trading into. So we might be around a number, they might break out and pull back inside of a 50 pip box, or we might be outside of a range and they jam it into the box and move, move it down to the lower part of that box. So as you can see, and I've received a ton of emails, as simple as it sounds and as it looks, in live time, it requires you to have a plan and each day learning a little bit more. The most important thing is that you stay at the extremes of the market. Anything inside of that puts you at greater risk of uh, you, can, you can ride certain trends uh, and you can get pips. But what we're talking about here is positioning yourself in the market for a, for a move of at least 50 pips that's scalable and duplicatable, targeting the market opens around the equity opening times. So have a great trading week. Thank you again for all the feedback. Keep getting better. We're going to go into part two and show some screen examples in a minute. Hopefully you got some value out of this. Keep the questions coming. And if you're happy with the videos, hit the like button and uh, we'll do our best to keep giving you more information. Stay disciplined, stay focused, and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.